Welcome to Auto Chatter. Today, I'd like to discuss Isuzu, specifically Isuzu's history in the U.S. with their production vehicles. I understand that today, one can purchase these in the U.S., but that's not the focus for today's chatter. As always, facts, opinions, and speculation will be presented. Please subscribe and like the video, as it means a lot. Now, where to begin with a company that started under this name in 1934? Well, I don't want to start that far back. Let's fast forward to their presence in the U.S. market. GM acquired a 34% stake in Isuzu in 1972, so let's start there. Isuzu's first vehicle we got was this, the Chevy Love Truck. Love stood for Light Utility Vehicle. GM noticed Americans started buying more of these small Toyota and Nissan, then called Datsun, pickups, and this was a response to that. It was a quick way to get into the minivan, or I'm sorry, mini truck game. Ford introduced the Courier in 1972 as well. It was a rebadged Mazda pickup. The Love had a small 75 horsepower four cylinder until the mid 70s when it got a huge jump to 80. It also got uh, front disc brakes for the first time around then. By 79, they debuted a 4x4 Love truck, which I believe was the first four wheel drive mini truck sold in America. Just barely though, as by the 80 model year, Toyota and Datsun, now Nissan, had them available too. The Love even briefly had a second gen, but I'll talk about it a little more in a bit. They had another uh, rebadged model in the 70s too. It was called the Buick Opel or the Opel by Isuzu. Opel was a German company GM used to own and we got several Opel vehicles over the years rebadged as Cadillacs, Buicks, Saturns, etc. They had a rebadged Opel Cadet they used to sell here but switched to an Isuzu built one in 1976. This car was basically an Opel Isuzu version of the Chevy Chevette. The Chevette was co-developed by Isuzu, Opel, and General Motors. Think of the platform it's built off of as a world car, as it was sold all over the place in various body styles. You've probably heard of the Chevette in the U.S. Um, those were around until 1987. But let's get back to where Isuzu started selling their cars here with just Isuzu written on them. That would be 1981. They launched the Pup. This was the second generation of the Faster, as the, the truck was called in Japan. You could also buy one of these badged as a Chevy Love briefly until the S10 launched for 1982 to replace it. The Pup had a 80 horsepower four cylinder engine or a 58 horsepower diesel available that got 44 miles of the gallon on the highway. As long as you're not in a big rush when you're on the highway. Four wheel drive was still available, of course, and by the mid 80s you could get a space cab, which is a really large extended cab compared to what anyone else offered at the time. In 1983, Isuzu brought us the Impulse. Pretty sleek looking, in my opinion, especially considering Japan got the first one in 1980. Rear drive with 90 horses to start. But in 1985, you could get a turbo one with 140. This was decent by 1980 standards. Also in 85, the Isuzu iMark came here. It was a front wheel drive small sedan. GM uh, also brought it here as the Chevy Spectrum, which was the Chevette's uh, replacement. Both were available during their run with a four cylinder power peaking in the low 100s range with the turbo version. Don't think you're going to race a Mustang GT with this. iMarks and Spectrum sold until the end of the 80s, basically. In 1984, Isuzu, Isuzu had an icon of sorts they started selling here. The Trooper. This was the one to get when you want to off-road but don't have Toyota Land Cruiser money. It only had 86 horsepower at launch and weighed 3,700 pounds, but was quite capable off 
pavement. Within a few model years, they got a bigger four-cylinder, upping the power past 100, and then a General Motors sourced V6, giving you 120. This was the 80s. These numbers were not as laughable then. <laughs> they briefly offered a diesel one too, but it didn't last long. First-gen troopers were no-nonsense machines built to get you out of sticky off-road situations. They were not mall and boulevard cruisers or made to impress your neighbors. Still, it was a nicer place to be inside than a Jeep CJ then. Two and four-door versions were available this generation. In the early 90s, we get a still capable but more day-to-day -day livable trooper. They were all V6s with a huge jump in power, 190 to 215 depending on the year. And troopers were sold here until 2002. I believe all troopers had four-wheel drive standard in both generations. All troopers sold here did not have uh, third row seats, but from what I've read, uh, they may have been available in other markets. They sold two-door versions here until the mid-90s with a shorter wheelbase. The weird thing with these, it cost more than the regular four-door ones and only came pretty much loaded called a Trooper RS. I'm not sure who in the marketing department thought that was a good idea. It only lasted here about three model years. Both generation troopers could be had with a five-speed or automatic transmission. Uh, by the late 80s anyway, the, the first generation trooper. Acura briefly sold a rebadged trooper called the SLX from 1996 to 1999 as Honda didn't have SUVs of their own yet and the market was uh, just getting popular. The SLX was uh, automatic transmission only. Now in the late 80s and early 90s, we get three Isuzus within a few model years that are all related. The third gen Isuzu truck debuts. It drops the Pup name in favor of just a Suzu truck. They had a 96 horsepower four-cylinder or a 120 horsepower General Motors V6. We're starting, we hear about that V6 a lot, don't we? Same V6 the first generation Trooper had as an option, actually. These were sold here until 1995, and the space cabs and four-wheel drives were still available. The Isuzu pickup has the distinction of being the last production vehicle you could buy in the U.S with a carburetor. The base model still had them until the mid-90s. Uh, this is an Amigo. It came a year after the redesigned truck. As you may be able to tell, it's truck-based. It was a Geo Tracker Suzuki Sidekick Jeep CJ or Wrangler type vehicle, um, being a convertible of sorts, but it was a little larger than the Suzuki Geo. The rear top dropped down and you could remove the sunroof making for a fairly uh, fairly open motoring for everyone. Two four-cylinders to choose from with the larger 2.6 120 horsepower engine being on the four-wheel drive models. No automatic transmission models until around 92 and it was rear-wheel drive only if you opted for that. The first gen Amigos were made until 1995 like the truck. Amigo being a two-door isn't really weird at the time. In the late 80s, Toyota 4Runners uh, Toyota and Nissan Pathfinders only came that way too. The other vehicle spawned from the Isuzu truck is this, the Rodeo, it came out in 1991. Isuzu's mid-size SUV offering. Again, it's based off the truck and only came in a four-door. The biggest competitor to these would probably have been the Jeep Cherokee as Pathfinders and 4Runners were more expensive. A GM V6 was available on the rodeo if you opted for the four-cylinder 2.6 liter. Um, it was five-speed and rear-wheel drive only. Both had 120 horsepower, but the V6 had more torque. Isuzu gave it uh, their own 3.2 liter V6 uh, starting in the 1993 model year, bringing power up to 174 initially and eventually 194 by the mid-90s. It was definitely competitive for the class. This was the same V6 the second generation Trooper had standard. Honda also sold rodeos from 1993 to 2002 and called them passports. <laughs> 
so uh, there was Honda versions of both generations of rodeos. In 1990, two more Isuzu cars came out here and they were significant. The first is a second generation Impulse. It was front wheel drive with 130 horsepower at launch, but in 1991 you could get an RS model. It had all wheel drive and a turbocharged four cylinder with 160 horsepower, but in 1992, it got a larger, uh, normally aspirated four-cylinder with 20 less horsepower. And I think that became the lone engine choice from then on out. GM had a version of the Impulse 2, and you may have seen more of those as they sold a lot better. The Geo Storm. It wasn't available with all-wheel drive or turbocharged variants, and it had a choice of a hatchback or wagon body style. There was just a lot more Chevy dealers nationwide, so Isuzu versions are, are a rare sight. The Storm sold well then, and GM owned Isuzu. I'm sure they allocated uh, more production for them because of that. Uh, the next iMark also came out and was renamed the Stylus. It shared its platform with the second gen Impulse. Power ranged from 95 horsepower up to an available 140 horsepower performance version by 92. Isuzu was hit hard by a large recession in Japan around that time, and due to corporate restructuring, decided to discontinue building cars altogether after the 93 model year. They would just build SUVs, trucks, diesels, and commercial vehicles from this point on. The Geo Storm was obviously killed too, since Isuzu no longer built cars. For those who may not know, uh, Geo was a line of cars sold at Chevy dealers in the 1990s. All of them were rebadged imports made by Suzuki, Isuzu, and Toyota. Now one thing I forgot to mention about uh, Suzu's advertising campaign in the 1980s. They launched a very funny series of commercials in 1986, starring the actor David Leisure. His character's name was Joe Isuzu. He would talk to the camera, lying his butt off about the vehicles, while text below would show the uh, below the screen would show displaying truthful statements to correct them. He was outrageous stereotype of a sleazy car salesman who will say anything to put you in a new ride. Many of these commercials are really funny and worth a look. These ads ran about five years until the early 90s. Isuzu did bring him back briefly from 1999 to around 2001. Looking back at Isuzu sales numbers, I can't help but notice the years they had Joe Isuzu both times were some of their best ones. Coincidence? Maybe. Now at this point, I've discussed mostly up until the mid-90s for Isuzu. In 1996, the Isuzu truck was replaced by a Chevy S10 GMC Sonoma clone called the Ombre. They had really limited options for it compared to the S10 Sonoma Cousins. It didn't sell well and it was axed in 2000. I was working at an Isuzu dealer in 1996 and I remember customers pulling up in their old Isuzu trucks, looking at this S10 with a weird nose and driving away shaking their heads. I felt bad too, as those old Isuzu trucks were tough little things so this kind of felt like a slap in the face. The Oasis also came out for 1996. I discussed this one in my minivan wars from the 90s video. It was a rebadged first generation Honda Odyssey. It's rare and they didn't sell well. It went away when Honda redesigned the Odyssey by the late 90s. In 1998 we get the redesigned Rodeo and they brought back the Amigo. Horsepower went up slightly, topping 200 horsepower and got 250 horses towards the end of their run. You could still get a four-cylinder as a base engine for both. In 2001, the Amigo gets renamed Rodeo Sport, and all Rodeo two- and four-doors go bye-bye for 2004. Not much to say about either, as they were very evolutionary step-ups from the first-generation brethren. Now, in 2002, Isuzu gave us this, the Axiom. It was basically a Rodeo, but shaped to look more like a crossover. It and the Toyota Highlander then looked uh, pretty similar. I'm not going to say that they copied the Toyota as they both came out around the same time. It was standard with the same 3.5 liter V6 the last rodeos had available that peaked at a 250 horsepower during its run. 
The intent of this thing was to offer a more upscale SUV over a rodeo, but no one bought them. And by 2004, the Axiom was gone too, along with the rodeos. By this time, Isuzu's best sales years here were long gone. But I can't forget chatting about the most interesting Isuzu ever made, can I? This is the Viacross. We got these from 1999 to 2001. It shared a lot of its bones with the two-door Trooper that we had here until 95. It had the Trooper's 215 horsepower 3.5 liter V6. It also had quite big for the time 18 inch wheels. It was standard with a pretty advanced computer controlled four wheel drive system and trick suspension. But it was pricey for an Isuzu and by the late 90s two door SUVs were just so last decade. I personally think Via Crosses are cool and I'd love to own one. Pity it wasn't available with a 5 speed, automatic only. So now it's the 2003 model year and there's only two more Isuzus to discuss. This is the Ascender. If it looks familiar, that's because it's a rebadged Chevy Trailblazer, GMC Envoy, Buick Rainier, Oldsmobile Bravada, and Saab 97X. The long uh, wheelbase one came first, replacing the Trooper. The shorter one replaced the Rodeo and came for 2004. A inline six was standard and a 5.3 liter V8, uh, GM of course, was available. So Isuzu did have a V8 in a production vehicle here before the end. After 2004, Suzu has only two models in their entire lineup, the Ascender and the i-Series pickup. They brought back a truck for 2005 after five years since the Ombre was dropped. Hey, it's a rebadged Chevy Colorado. Well, sort of. Suzu actually co-developed what would be become the Colorado. The Isuzu version we got could be had with a four-cylinder or inline five, like what the Colorado and GMC Canyon had, in extended cab or crew cab bodies. It was a poor seller, and so was the Ascender. The only real advantage the Isuzu versions offered towards the end was a generous warranty. But everyone knew Isuzu was about to throw in the towel, and in 2008, they did. They announced they were ceasing operations in North America and only selling commercial vehicles. Sales of Isuzu's were never gigantic in the U.S. market. Their market share in the U.S. peaked in the late 80s and it was still less than 1%. Their best years were in the mid 80s to early 90s and they peaked around 127,000 units annually and that was the entire model line. By 2005 they barely sold 12,000 units and it went down from there. I always thought it was odd that Isuzu couldn't make bank selling only SUVs and trucks starting in the early 90s as those markets really took off. But they were slow to change and let most of their models get way too dated before redesigning them. Their lack of making more fuel efficient crossovers I'm sure didn't help either, but that's not what Isuzu did. They made great off-road vehicles. This is Japan's first automaker. They designed interiors at one point not to be pretty, but so you could operate all the major controls while wearing gloves. They made a fun sports car and a convertible SUV. They are the world's largest diesel engine manufacturer currently. And they made a state-of-the-art off-roader that was ahead of its time, maybe too much so. Suzu brought some interesting vehicles here over the years, and I was sad to witness their decline. Well, that was the, the Isuzu Chatter. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy it, please drop a like, or even better, subscribe. Chatter out.